Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm Rare from Web. I come from a Google Studio. I'm here with uh, Shime Yure. And I'll be talking about the service I've been working on called Stormfire. Um, so essentially, it's a service um, that provides emails to your um, customer management system or e commerce system or some similar application. They need the need of um, having emails about customers or some entities that get emails. Um, <coughs> so I guess the easiest way to explain how, the, how it works or how to use it is through our example. It was developed for our uh, company's internal needs. Um, it's now released as an open source. Um, so our use case, um, we have multiple um, customer managers. They are constantly in contact with our customers um, on the phone, for example. And it's very important that they have um, as much data about the customers they're talking on the phone um, in front of them, so they can have a quality conversation and make uh, good decisions um, from the history based on yeah, the best correspondence with the, the customer. Um, so they have like history of um, phone calls, emails, notes, stuff like that. The part where the store mail um, comes in here is just the mail part. So it provides um, all the history um, through its API. Um, our CMS is in it's totally different system. It's PHP Drupal, so it can be connected to pretty much anything. Um, store mail is um, made from three main components. The answer API, where most of the logic is. Um, and then we also have an email fetching service that runs separately <coughs> from the send, send queue service. Um, they are kind of loosely coupled by kind of, I mean, they don't talk through like JSON API, but they all connect to the same database. Um, but they can, they, they, they are running separate pro um, processes. And they can only, you know, you can shut down send queue and it still works except for that part. Or you can replace it um, with some other, um, if you have some other um, email source that doesn't fit into this, um, um, any of these um, components, you can add stuff um, and it should work. So they just exchange the data through the database but don't share the logic except for the DBIX best um, logic that's bind to the service. Um, and the API, of course, for the external um, application, like um, our Drupal CMS, is, is a JSON API. That's good. Um, as mentioned, it's built in Dancer, um, heavily with the DBIX class, so you can use any um, database um, you want, and um, it's very easy to, to extend stuff if you are familiar with those technologies, or just use the, the functionality that you already get. So the, the functions are the basic stuff that you would expect for, from such system. So getting emails, um, sending emails, and also tagging for easier organization subsets. Um, getting emails is very straightforward. You just go to a URL, um, you provide the, the customer email or multiple emails that are part to it, and you get back um, JSON with all the emails from a history from, that were gathered from multiple sources. So you just display it for the um, employee to have all the information it needs. Um, as all emails are stored in conventional uh, relational database and use DBX class, it's very easy to add another um, root or API call with very custom stuff. You can do all sorts of manip data manipulation and stuff like that, since you all probably know Perl and this um, Technologies, it should be easy to extend or add some custom functionality between 
Otherwise, it just this becomes the email. Um, it also supports sending emails. So in our use case, um, some emails go directly to Gmail accounts. Some get sent through a CMS system. They can perform on the um, customer details page, and they can send it there. We also send invoices um, through this system. Um, so there's multiple mail conversations going on in different places, and send mail combines all that in one place, and then serves it. Um, to, um, at first, the sending um, was happening right away, so you may get a call and send it. Um, but with mass mail or bad sending, which is also um, available, uh, we found out that this may clog the system and make it unresponsive or even crash it if there are too many requests. And it's very important that, they, that the customer managers always have the information, the history, so the basic um, functionalities of um, Stormail available to them. So if sending some advertising to crash the API, it would not be good. So um, kind of separated it. So the only thing that it actually does is just save the email um, to the database and mark it to be sent later. It appears um, immediately in the system. But the, the mailing service then periodically checks for it and sends it. It usually happens um, very fast, but in case of um, too much email, it may just you know take some time. But um, the, the service continues working um, with the same speed and um, availability. Um, attachments are um, sent through API with um, encoded in base 64, and on the server side, I um, unpack them and save them uh, to the file system as regular files so the data dumps are um, easy to um, back up, they're not big and you can separately make um, backups for um, just those um, directories there, save the corresponding directories. Okay. Um, it also supports tagging, um, nothing fancy here, just uh, basic functionality similar to, for example, Gmail labels. So you can add them, remove them, check if you have, get a list of all emails with the tag. It's just um, one thing that you would need. Mm. Okay, so the other service is uh, so we regard the API now, and the other service is the uh, email fetching daemon. Um, I've used mail I'm a client for it, um, and it operates in two modes, the initial one and then the daemon one. Well, the first, when you, when you set up the system, you should run the initial one to get all the mail that it finds on all the IMAP um, servers which is specified. And then you just run a daemon that checks periodically for new mail and patches it and then adds it into the Stormail database. Um, there were a few challenges I'll go through when developing this um, service. <coughs> so the first one was the attempt to clean up the emails. Um, as you probably know, the email clients usually um, when you reply a message or forward it, they just add the, um, the stuff on the bottom and you just write a new email um, on top. Um, so the, the, the message, the, if you do uh, 10 replies, you usually end up with a large message. So I, uh, I wanted to get rid of that and just you know, have the new message that was sent, the important stuff, but it turned out that it's um, very difficult or nearly impossible to do that with um, so that you can be sure that you won't delete the content that actually was not meant to be deleted. Um, because it's quite easy to find how Gmail operates or Outlook or a few others, but then you have infinite numbers of different clients, or you can just you know hard code send some email. The problem is that it's not defined. It's you get the, the just the string that has 
some object to it or not, or different one, we can't, we don't know. So we end up building some content that was important, so we decided it's better to just save the photo content and then on the client side, on the CMS for example, you can hide the portions and if it turns out that you hide it too much, you can just show it, you know. But you can't believe it at this stage. It's too, too dangerous. Um, also, inline reply, it crashes the system, so if someone goes and replies in the history, you know, it's, there's no way to universally figure out what's the new stuff and how is it meant to be. Um, the other thing is that the uh, messages or emails can have plain text. Um, I kind of thought that all emails have plain text and then in addition maybe also a rich um, version um, HTML content. Turns out that most do, but not all, so you, all can, you don't know what you will get. Um, we prefer the, the plain text since we're more interested in content than in the style of the emails, um, but in the end I end up saving both because it can, the email just can have either of them and then the API returns the, returns the preferred version. I tried HTML cleaning, HTML cleaning you know, or converting to plain text, but again, there's no, they, they don't validate, you, you just can't do it. It's too, it's too unpredictable what you will get. Um, and another thing was um, in the rich content, emails um, appears style tag, um, which you find some CSS. And in our case, we don't use like an iframe for displaying emails, but we uh, inject on JavaScript and it affects the whole page. So the design crashed if email had some, I don't know, red background setting and everything <laughs> went red. So I do clean that. Um, you don't uh, lose what you want to do. Sorry? Uh, no. <laughs> we haven't, okay, we haven't run into that yet, but yeah, good. The, the script, the <laughs> script <laughs> yeah. Good idea. Uh, the other thing is message IDs, the unique IDs. Um, well, then a challenge, the IMAP client um, provides like a serial numbers, the one, two, three, four, five, or some unique IDs, um, which are unique in that connection or in that um, particular server, but it's not like unique for the um, this email in the whole <laughs> universe. Um, I mean, if um, uh, if three of our employees got the same mail, they were in the two, um, and um, I pulled from each one of them, they all had different um, unique ID since they were on different servers um, and there were, there were duplicated um, messages so this was not the, not the right thing to do auto implementing the ID is obviously also not, not going to work there is, a, there is a message ID parameter in the email scatter but that um, first thing is that it's not always there. Sometimes they just don't put it there. It depends again on the email client that they send the email. <coughs> and when it when it's there, it's just unique. I mean, it's not even unique, but it's more it's meant more for the security and checking if the email is really with, with, with the email is supposed to be. <coughs> and it's different with every client. Um, um, so, even the fact that it's sometimes not there, it's just not enough, so uh, you don't have an ID. Um, what I end up doing is just sending the whole message header to the MP5 function, so I get a hash, and that represents the, this particular email always uniquely, and if it comes from different sources, it's always gets the same ID, so there's no duplicates in our system.
the next challenge was uh, getting new emails. Um, I tried um, not using any labels or any marks on the on the, on the server to you know to mark which one were already pulled and stuff like that. <coughs> I tried to make it as universal as possible, so not write anything to the um, IMAP the server side. Um, so the problems I ran into is you you're not really able to query or uh, to query through the um, IMAP emails. You just get a list and you pull them one by one um, without any details in the list. So it's very hard to okay, I'll show you in this um, example. So for example, we run the initial uh, import. Okay, let's pretend we only have welcome inbox. So we we run the initial, okay, we get uh, this email in our store mail, and then we run the daemon. And the daemon checks the for new mail. So you say, okay, you know, just sort it by date or something and give me this. And this, this is not SQL, you can't query like that. You just get a list of one, two, three, four, five, and uh, you have your emails in this way. There's no ID mapping also. So, what you can do is go through mail and check, okay, I already have this one, I already have this one. You could start at the beginning. In this, in this case, no problem, but when you have 1,000 emails, that's already not, obviously not the, the right solution because you have to download each one of them and check, okay, I already have this one, have this one. So, the natural solution would go, okay, go from the, from the opposite order, from back, and you get, okay, this one, and just keep fetching emails till you get to the one that you already have, so you get a new one. Okay, I have this one. But then when we test it, we wanted to test all the scenarios, so we crash the, <coughs> the, the service at this point. Or you can perhaps um, restart the server or something in the middle of the but the, the service may go down for any reason. And then when you restart the service, let's Okay, you get a new email in, in the meantime, and then the service again checks for new email. It says, "Okay, hello, I don't have this one. Save it." And then it gets offer offers and says, "Okay, I already have this one. Stop." So obviously, as you can see, we end up with gap um, that never gets filled unless you run the initial that goes through everything. So the solution was um, to introduce the temporary stack of emails um, and just get new emails but not, um, not saving it directly um, into the database right away but adding them to the stack until you um, bump into the one you already have. Okay, so now it stops, we already have welcome and I'll just insert them in the reverse order um, and, they, and if in this moment the, the, the service crashes it will continue at the right place the next time. So we end up with no gaps. A new mail appears, this was the stack, just don't have. So this was solved universally. Okay, the third service is the mail, mail queue, which main purpose is balancing flow in case of um, sending um, multiple emails. <coughs> um, essentially, it works just checking. The email has a field um, queue with epoch time in it and it sorts, it sorts them the way they were added to it and just gets the list, sends it, sets the field to um, send and sends it um, through send mail in our case which is set up with uh, Mandrill uh, but you can use any other sending service that you may already have. Um, it down here is the log file, they both have logs of course, so you can check um, what's going on. Those dots are appearing each few seconds when you check, and when you find it says okay, doing emails, processing, sending, and stuff like that. So you know what's going on. <coughs> the graphical representation of the whole system, so there's our PHP, Drupal, CMS, which can be e-commerce system or something similar, and this whole infrastructure of getting email from multiple email accounts. For example, if you have a new employee, you just add its credentials to the config file, restart the service, and the emails 
needed to appear in the database into API in CMS system. And the same view just waits for each job. So how do you install it and implement it in your own system? This part is um, very straightforward. You just clone it, uh, input the database credentials in the setup and your uh, email accounts or stuff that you will need. Um, create a database. Everything is defined in the various classes, so you just run the deploy it once you have the connection in there. It creates all the tables for you. Um, so the um, API is running, only you can run it, and it's running, then you just run those two services also. And think, think is kind of set up if you need only the basic functionality. Then you just have to implement it on the CMS side or the e-commerce side. You can test it right away in browser, check logs, how it's working. There's even a simple um, graphical interface just for uh, showing how it all works. So you can, it's easier for you to implement on your, in your system and to check if everything got set up the way it should. And of course the APIs, you can just go to the browser and check and get back the JSON results, the most you get functions. So it's very easy. Okay, that's it, thank you. Um, do you have any questions? <laughs>